So let's uh, look at this example, calculate delta G. We got a new handy dandy equation. We know how uh, temperature affects it, uh, the spontaneity. We know whether or not it's spontaneous or not. Now let's just calculate it. So let's try example 17.3. Consider the following reaction. For the decomposition of carbon tetrachloride gas. All right, so let's calculate delta G at 25 degrees Celsius. Here's the enthalpy and here is the entropy. All right, so this is not too bad. Um, we're going to determine whether or not it is spontaneous. So delta G is delta H minus T delta S. Good. Our enthalpy is right here plus 95.7 kilojoules minus temperature 25 degrees Celsius, right? 25 degrees Celsius. I'll just write that right here. No, wait. Plus, two, I should convert it to Kelvin? Oh, yes, we probably should convert it to Kelvin. 298. Oh, how that happened? Mm, times uh, my delta S. Delta S is right here, plus 142.2 joules per Kelvin. Rot row. Got to change it to kilojoules, right? If my delta H is in kilojoules, and it's usually reported to in kilojoules, and my delta S is only in joules, and it is usually reported to in joules, I got to make them match so I can add and subtract them, right? 0 0.142, okay. That is, again, usually the uh, case because entropy changes are a lot smaller than enthalpy changes. So delta S is usually reported to in just joules. Enthalpy is reported to in kilojoules because it's usually a lot larger. So joules per Kelvin. And if I want to convert that to kilojoules, how many uh, joules are in a kilojoule? A thousand? Started writing it before I asked it, so I'll probably just tell you. You knew that. All right, so that is going to be 0 0.1422 kilojoules per Kelvin. Do you think I need the whole Bluetooth wireless earpiece, or should I just text? Just have it talking on. Well, you don't want that in like this kind of setting. You know. Plus, you don't want to know people you're using the pretty and pen. You want, they want you to know that, that you want people to think that you can spell <laughs> very good, uh, welly, spell well. Excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> See, that's why I need the pretty and pen. Spell goodly? Properly. Spell good. I spell good. See? Well. <laughs> All right, so what do we get for delta G? To the pretty and pen would have already told me. <laughs> I'm sorry? Positive 53. Point three. What are my units? Kilojoules. No, the Kelvin cancel. So we're left with the kilojoules. Well, it's addition and subtraction, so it's not. So I got a 53.3, and then I got a 91. 53, 53, 53. All right. Okay. So let's uh, determine whether the reaction is spontaneous or not. Is it spontaneous or non spontaneous? Non spontaneous. Which we really should have realized or predicted. Look at B. 
if the reaction is not spontaneous, here's more work. Oh, come on, Tro. Come on, Tro. He had, it. He had us trapped. All right, so yes, that is non-spontaneous. Now that we know it's non-spontaneous, determine at what temperature, if any, the reaction becomes spontaneous. And here's where we can calculate um, what temperature it becomes spontaneous. Now, um, how are we going to do this? Well, if it's positive, it's non-spontaneous. If it's negative, it's spontaneous, right? So what happens in the middle? It equals zero, all right? And that would be at equilibrium. So that's like the tipping point. Whenever delta G equals zero, that's when it can turn spontaneous or non-spontaneous depending on increasing or decreasing the temperature. So to solve for the temperature at which it becomes spontaneous, you set delta G equal to zero and solve for the temperature. So if delta G equals zero, we got zero equals delta H minus T delta S. Let's add T delta S to both sides, shall we? So T delta S equals delta H. Then what do I do? Divide by, by delta S. Okay, so we got temperature equals delta H over delta S, and then we can calculate. We've already got our enthalpy and our entropy. Our enthalpy was a positive 95.7 kilojoules. Our delta S, and we are going to have to one, use the one we converted to kilojoules, so it's, uh, plus 0.1422 kilojoules. And so we can take uh, 95.7 divided by 0 0.1422. Six seventy-three. What are my units? Kelvin. Kilojoules cancel out, leaving me with Kelvin. So this reaction becomes spontaneous.